let me know. And go. We're live. What's up, everybody? I'm Mitch with Stone Coat Epoxy. It's Friday night and we're live. I'm gonna teach you a very, really cool recipe that I learned while I was out traveling to South Texas at RK3 Designs. Uh, there I, I, I help Rhonda with RK3 teach a hands-on training for the pros. Uh, but anybody can join that. If you wanna turn your epoxy skills into a business, check out rk3designs.com, class schedule, book that pro class. It's an amazing class where you learn tons of epoxy finishes. You're gonna learn how to build uh, from scratch, build brand new countertops. You're gonna learn shower panels. You're gonna learn the epoxy world plus marketing and business. That alone is worth it, your price of admission, plus you have a great time. Anyways, I learned from Clara Lawrence, who's out there who helped teaches uh, out there with Rhonda. I learned her uh, method using alcohol dyes. She used alumilite dyes in alcohol, 91% isopropyl, makes her own alcohol inks. There's, uh, alcohol inks can create very beautiful, life-like, natural-looking countertops, but there's one thing with a lot of alcohol inks that you may not know, but they're not UV stable. That means you set your beautiful countertop or artwork out in the sun, and in as a few days to months, your colors will fade right away. But our Lumalite dyes, the dyes we sell on our website, are 100% UV stable, so you use a one or two drops of the dye in one ounce of alcohol, and you go over a cured piece. So what I have right here is an exotic pour that I poured just a few days ago using three colors. I use blue pearl, white dye, and our alloy metallic powder. Mix those all up, poured it into a bucket, and then poured it out just for this specific piece. So you could start with, you know, just a, just a white background, a black background, or you can have an epoxy technique down and then layer on this technique that I'm gonna show you today. And then we're gonna, co then we're gonna cover that, excuse me, we're gonna cover that with clear epoxy and now the countertop would be complete. I tested out that yesterday when I mixed up my dyes on this guy. So well, one thing you need to know also, after you put your dyes and alcohols down, we're gonna move it around with a blow dryer, then let that dry completely. And then we're gonna cover that with an, like an archival spray. This one is a Rust-Oleum one. It adds some UV protection. It covers those uh, dyes and mica powders we're applying in a few minutes. It protects them, so then we can cover that with epoxy, protect it for forever, and then that's gonna be a usable, functional countertop that's gonna look like a piece of art. So I've mixed up mm, three different dye colors, and I mixed up some mica powders in the alcohol as well. Those same mica powders that you can mist on the countertop, I just put them in these little bottles here with a fine little tip. I picked these up on Amazon. Uh, if Claire is in the chat, she'll share a link from Amazon on there. Uh, they're very cheap and these will last you a very, very long time. So let's get to work. You want tools of the trade for this technique. Again, you want a countertop that you want a, a project that already has epoxy down. I'm going to use a blow dryer to move those colors around. I'm going to have extra isopropyl alcohol here. That's I'm going to put some of that down. I'm going to lay, lay my colors and then move them around, let that dry. This is all about layering. So enough yapping, let's get to work. I also have alloy and three of our pearls. I have violet pearl, blue pearl, and green pearl. I don't know if I'm gonna use green, but maybe I will. And let us know, guys, where you're watching from in the chat. So i have wet down an area first with just a little bit of alcohol. And then shake up, shake up your uh, dyes and alcohols before you apply them, because they want to, uh, they're gonna settle. Ooh, that's pretty already, right? And I kinda like putting all the colors down in one little rainbow. Not a rainbow, but a line. And then push those around with the alcohol. And I'll push back and forth. Guys, let us know where you're watching from and if you have any questions throughout the show. I'll be trying to answer some Q&A as I work here. Mm. But this is gonna start coming to life. 
when you start layering those colors on. You could also use a heat gun for this, but the heat gun almost dries the alcohol a little too fast where you could create some rippling and cool effects. With the, with the blow dryer here. Let me add some alloy to that. Can Say what now? Can craft boat be used for the, uh, the underlying color layer? Oh, uh, craft coat has no UV resistance in there. That's why it's craft coat. It's kind of for exploring and doing crafty things. So if you tint that with a pure earth tone color, you totally could uh, use that kind of as your base layer. But I would tint it with like a copper, a bronze, something like that. This is a big piece. Got some blue pearl. And some silver. Oh, look what my alcohol did though. So again, this is all about layering too. Half of an inch, depending on mass. Uh, if it's a small half inch crack, you could use the normal epoxy. If it is a big mass, you're gonna wanna go to our casting resin, which is a two to one. And it can, um, it can pour up to one inch thick. See, as you push and move these colors, over one another, it like reinvigorates those colors you've layered and that's when you start really benefiting from those layers. I kind of like that sharp line though. You'll be able to find and get some kind of unique fracture lines in your piece. And then if you want, if it's too dark, come back with some alcohol. And then move those colors again and it feathers those hard lines out. Say what? Car polish would, but we actually sell a polish uh, that works really good with our resin, uh, the polish and cleaning kit. It's it's more uh, it's more designed for an epoxy, but since clear coats of on cars are pretty much very similar, it will work. But not all car polishes will so. You want to test that on a, on a salt, small sample piece or just go with the stuff we're selling. It works very well on our resin. I love what's going on here already. And I love how when you do this, you can use your background to your advantage. You don't need to do this across the whole piece, but you could, oh, it's a really cool way to add some subtle color. Now this is blue pearl. I have some blue pearl in there already. Let's just add some right across there. 
and add some more silver to it. Where's my silver, my alloy? Oh, I went crazy, didn't I? Okay, now if you guys hate what you do, you could take your alcohol, wet your whole piece, wipe it all off, start fresh. That's a cool feature of this uh, technique for sure. Say what now? Can you apply the alcohol ink to a fresh coat of epoxy? So you can. Uh, alcohol inks can go into fresh epoxy, but they act completely different. That's almost, if you've seen us mist in the epoxy, uh, mist in the isopropyl alcohol and mica, it almost wants to fracture and create lacing on the surface. This way, there's no way you could get these almost giant cells, which are looking quite cool. These sharp lines, at first you almost, you think something's not right, but as you layer that up, they keep layering on one another. It almost looks subtle, subtle like a geode in a, in a way, kind of get that cell fracturing going on, and then the light catches the mic if you've applied. It's a way cool thing. But they, you can, they go into wet epoxy. It's a great question. They can be applied in the wet epoxy, but they act completely different than this. This is a unique technique where you're applying it onto a finished board, adding some visual interest to a board you already have, and then coming back, covering it with that clear epoxy, protecting everything, and this job will be complete. I'm gonna mix up some epoxy and show you what that looks like with clear epoxy. It almost magnifies what that thing already looks like. It's really cool. Now I gotta add more alcohol to this. I'm gonna let that dry right like that. I like that. Colors uh, with large patches of transparent epoxy for a 3D effect. Just repeat the question, Chris. How about like uh, making many layers of uh, epoxy with uh, color on them, but uh, big transparent areas for a 3D effect? So you can oh yeah, that's there. cool. I've seen uh, that totally can be done. That just takes lots of layers of epoxy. It's going to take additional material, but you can get some amazing countertops and looks whenever that that technique is used. I've seen a guy. One sec. I've seen a dude do a floor like an ocean and kept doing different translucent layers of different shades of blues and teals so the entire floor looked like a gradient ocean uh, i watched the time lapse of it on social media it was amazing but it was probably 30 layers of floor epoxy so i bet you the guy had a hookup on epoxy somehow i don't know because it was a lot but it looked way cool as i yap the alcohol starts to dissipate and the colors will concentrate and they move completely differently. Quite slow, but you can get some ripples in there if you catch it at the right time.
do like that. That is cool. I'm gonna add more layer now. Not that one. You get some violet. Picked it up the high gear. So what? Some gold. Gold. That is a good call. I don't know if I have any gold mixed up. That would look good. I can mix them up though. I like creating these sharp lines and then coming back over it. Oop, I have to cover that though. Can erase boo boos with the with the wet alcohol. Like those cells. I don't like that. So just push some alcohol over to it. Yeah, if you had a floor down, sure. And you weren't pleased with your look. So the question was, can this be done on a floor? Absolutely. So if you if you were done doing your marble floor and it's a little, you don't, there's some parts you don't like, you totally can mix up some alcohols and do it right over. You're gonna have to clear coat it then. You're gonna want to, you're gonna have to cover it with an archival spray, so that could get stinky. But you could do it. If you if you omit using the micas, the micas are what likes to. Um, the micas are what likes to wipe off. The dyes, depending on how concentrated, can um, also stay quite wet. Ooh, that's cool. 
I like that violet blue going into that green. That looks really pretty. Say what now? This can be put on stuff other than epoxy. It likes epoxy to move like that. It's able to move nicely uh, because it has a nice slick surface. Uh, if Claire's in the, if Clara Lawrence is in the comments, in the comment section, ask her. She would be able to tell you. I think you can go over an archival spray. I think you could. She she makes artwork, amazing, beautiful artwork on her uh, for sale on her website, ClaraLawrenceArt.com. But she uh, creates like dragons using this method. Uh, painstakingly long, tedious process, but in the end result is something that you, uh, you, you don't see anywhere else. It's absolutely beautiful. And she covers those with epoxy, but I don't know. I think you can, I think you could go over archival spray. If you have something glossy down, then you can move colors around on top of it and then come back and protect it with some epoxy. That's kind of looking cool. I'm going to run, I'm going to run some of this teal where, which one is that one? Not that one, this color. That was a good question though. So. Here's a request for a recipe, uh, doing the white countertops with tones of red and silver. Red and silver. This is a future video. That's a great idea. Reds are hard to do with white, because why? It becomes pink, but I've seen it done. That's a great request. I'm heading out to Texas for another hands-on training class here in next in the next week. I'm pumped about it. I love those classes. What do I use to, uh, the question, what do you use to protect epoxy from hot objects? So I'll use a cutting board. Uh, we use like silicone little hot, hot pot holders almost. It's like a trivet. This is the bottom of your pot. We set that down, set it on there. Um, when I'm cooking with a crock pot on, my, on a white, uh, white epoxy countertop, you're gonna wanna put a cutting board, set the crock pot up on that, get it elevated up, let some air go onto that bad boy. That, ooh, that's gonna look cool. I'm gonna leave that alone, let it dry. But that is what I use to protect it. But if you happen to set it on there for a short amount of time, it's totally fine. The epoxy is, to ooh, that was green pearl. I don't know about that. I didn't mean to use green pearl. Oh, what do you think, Nate? Looking good. Is that a boo-boo, the green pearl? No. No, should I yeah, use more? <laughs> it adds a shimmer to it, that's for sure. Yeah, whoa, look at that. Should I use more of that? Maybe I'll just use some blue pearl. Is there any Q&A questions, Chris? About a ceramic coating. Would that work? Yeah, this should work over a ceramic coating, definitely. I haven't messed with many ceramic coatings on my countertops. I don't mess with many ceramic coatings on my countertops because they are there are designed for automotive industry. And I don't know if there's a ceramic coating out there that's uh, approved for food contact. So if your chicken breast slips off your plate and hits on there, I don't know. I don't think there is one available for food contact. So you want? Heat on the blow dryer. I am. It's on. It's on warm instead of hot. And I've been switching from high, uh, really pushing air to not. You know, uh, excuse me. I've been going from low to high, but mainly staying on low. Oh, what if it was a bigger project? How about a leaf blower? Leaf blower. Woo. That might be cool. But I don't know if you'd be spraying alcohol all over the place. This seems pretty sufficient. I'm gonna push a little bit back this way over my other color. 
and then I'm going to push everything the other direction. And this is on low and warm. The, the female audience will understand what I'm saying about that probably more than the men. <laughs> well, I don't know. There's probably lots of men who use blow dryers. I've always had short hair. That looks cool. You can see as you kind of just layer it, it creates its own unique look. And using the right, ba the right base epoxy and the right dye colors, I've seen some really amazing countertops on insiders using this method. I don't like how that pearl's floating though. Question about uh, foam for showers. Yes. Uh, use one inch, right? Yeah, you, uh, depends on where you're going at. Yeah. Funny you may ask that. I have a sample ready to show you. So right here, I just did a demo for a um, RV show. There was like a class where you could go learn how to build a van conversion or a school bus into a you know, affordable living. Um, and our shower panels work perfectly in that exact scenario. So this is a one inch piece of pink foam that I picked up at the Home Depot. Um, and then I used Quick Coat at three ounces per square foot and I embedded fiberglass mesh through the whole piece. And then I come back and cover that with another three ounces of Quick Coat. That way that mesh is completely sealed in there. The Quick Coat, you could recoat that in two to three hours. So I started off in the morning, I cut my piece to size with a sheetrock knife. I sanded the edges with 220 on a random orbital sander. I then put three ounces of quick coat, my mesh, came back, coated it two hours later. Three hours later when it was fully dried, I did my two coats of uh, epoxy undercoat in white. And then from there, you gotta let that dry three to four hours. Uh, let that off gas, you're ready to coat it with epoxy. Then I just poured a little exotic pour over that. And then the next day, I would do the ultimate top coat and this thing would be ready to go. You just use silicone to glue it in, but I just knocked over my alcohol. But this stuff is super durable and mega lightweight. It's awesome. Um, but the answer to that question is, one inch foam is what I use. What you wanna pay attention to when you are uh, about to do your shower, if you're not demoing back down to the studs and then you know start with a, you wanna start with a waterproofed, you want your shower to be ready for tile install. That's how you want it. You want it waterproofed, ready to rock, like you're gonna install a tile in it. If that's the case, one inch foam will work just fine. If you're going over uh, existing, over old, you gotta pay attention on, how, if you add an inch of foam and epoxy, your handle's gonna stick out far. Then you're gonna have to get extended screws. Sometimes the handles won't open properly if you add that one inch. So depending on your faucet, they actually sell an extender. You'd have to look that up and pay attention to that. Or if you're building a new home, you tell your builder, I'm adding one inch foam shower panels to this and they'll kick out your, your handle a little bit further. They'll fur it out is what that means. That way your handle works perfectly uh, down the road when you go to install that. I'm just gonna add a little more to this, but that was a very good question. But I think we're pretty much done. I'm gonna coat it with epoxy tomorrow. We gotta let this fully dry, and then um, we'll spray it with that archival spray. That stuff actually dries pretty quick. That looks cool. Can uh, the epoxy go over 3D surfaces? Like if a 3D model was printed and then you covered the epoxy? It sure can. I'd use the Quick Coat and Alumilite, our sister company, sells a version that is UV stable called Amazing Quick Coat. It's our Quick Coat recipe, but it's crammed full of UV inhibitors. Um, it's quite thick. It's a lot thicker than our normal epoxy, 
But that is what I would use. And then I get alcohol over my thing. Dang it. That is what I would use for 3D objects. If it's a tumbler and things like that, it'll be spinning. That's even best case scenario. But epoxy likes to self-level. So it's going to, it's going to run. So do really thin coats on 3D objects. I kind of messed it up. One moment. I got to get these polka dots off. like that. What's up? What's the question? How are you? I'm well. How about a backsplash for a... Uh... That was a great question. A <laughs> <laughs> uh, backsplash for a fifth wheel. It's good for that, right? Totally. You, yeah, you want to do the backsplash flat, though. It would be difficult to do this sort of technique vertical because everything's just going to run right down. And that, it... Oh, that green's kind of cool. I'm going to use some more of the green, but then it, it will run down. So you can do it. it lightweight for sure. If you're going to do backsplash for your fifth wheel with foam, is that what they're talking? I would. That's totally doable. Hey, Mitch, don't we have a sale? Oh, funny you may ask that right as I put alcohol down. But yes, we do have a sale on our alcohol dyes, quick coat, uh, our flooring epoxy, various other items. <clears throat> I'm sure one of my homies named Luke We'll leave a link in the description below. Take into a landing page, 20% off all of our epoxy dyes, quick coat. So it's a perfect time to test out a thing, uh, this technique, uh, and check out Clara Lawrence Art. So follow her on YouTube as well as Facebook. Get in her DMs. She will probably love to share you a couple of these recipes. Let me share a couple with you that she uh, shared with me on the alcohol dyes, so you could pause this later on. These are the colors I created. I created a blue violet. That is the lighter purpley blue I made. Three blue dyes, two violet dyes into one ounce of alcohol dye. Cool gray, way cool name. One black dye, one blue dye, one ounce of alcohol. Then the smoky blue, my uh, favorite, as well as my favorite name. One blue dye two ocean blue, two black, and then I put a little pebble or you could put like a BB or something like that in there. That helps you shake it up. And then I use alloy, alloy into the alcohol. I use violet pearl, blue pearl, and green pearl. And those created my alcohol dyes, but come, man, and they look so different when you walk around them, which is pretty crazy. Some of this, some of these hard lines, I'm not the biggest fan of. But like I said, layering, I'm going to do, I never finished that spot, dude. We started talking. Oh, well, let me add some. And then I'll mix up some epoxy real quick. Here's a question. Yo. Can I route my existing square laminate countertop? I want yes. to put a round over on it. Totally can. That is how they cut and round over laminate anyway. So yes, you can use just that eighth inch or quarter inch round over bit. Um, you're gonna walk that router rod right on the top edge and often the bottom is square too. So I walk it on the top, I'll flip the router over so the plate's on the face and then I'll run it across that bottom edge. Where you can't hit is your base plate's gonna come to about right here and you'll have a couple inches next to the walls that you can't round over. Do not fret. That's when you grab the random orbital sander and just match that radius by hand. Super easy. Um, if you have a seam there, a, a hard line, 
use Bondo to feather that over because that will translate through. The micas will settle down on that and then you'll be able to see that. Very good question, but that totally can be done. Ooh, this is one of my favorite color combos so far now. It's that green we put in. What if the existing countertops are not level? Very good question. <clears throat> so what I would do as a installer or homeowner is I would try to level them as best as possible. Often your back corner in an L is gonna be down. It settles for some reason or the, or the cabinet guy installed it that way. Oftentimes it'll settle. Go in and shim underneath there as best as you, as you can. If there's screws, oftentimes they're at a 45 angle at the top of your cabinet. Take those off, add some shims in there get it nice and level, and then reattach it with some screws so it stays nice and tight down to the cabinets. Um, if you cannot do that, I have sacrificially used a little bit of epoxy. I've t I, you know, I prepped the countertop as normal. Uh, it was a white marble, and it was a mobile home, and it was way out in that corner. I couldn't get under there. It was glued and screwed. It was a nightmare. I couldn't even fit in the cabinet. It was tiny. So I just did, I used some epoxy as a self-leveling agent. I, I, applied, I applied it in that back corner and then when it dried, because I didn't need the whole thing, it was just that back corner was down, I applied a little bit down there, let it feather out, and then I sanded that, feathered it back down to the countertop, and then poured my countertop as one, and it worked perfectly. It was nice and level. Not all my colors ran to that low spot, which is what will happen if you pour on an unlevel countertop. It's all going to run to wherever you're unlevel. So. Try to get as level as possible when you go to uh, pour your epoxy. All right, I'm about done. I think I'm gonna mix up some. Uh... How much is that blow dryer? Huh? How much the it's pretty lame. It was 18 bucks at Wally World. It's Revlon. Right? Hmm? It's working fine, right? Yeah, it's working fine. I'm on warm, so I'll switch it to high and low, and I've noticed that kind of gives you a different look. It'll ripple it, and then when I like what I see, I'll kick it to high speed, which will dry it faster, and I'll pull it back further, and then it dries out that way. But like right now, that's still a little bit wet. So just I'll hit it on high, and it barely moves it at this point because it's almost dry. Dry. I'm digging what the interference screen does to it, so I'm gonna do that. I'm going crazy, why not? Uh-oh, I might have messed it up. Did I mess it up? Maybe. Repeat the question. Can the ultimate top coat be removed with a planer if you uh, want what you want? No, I would just use a sander. I'd use a 120 grit on a sander. Uh, try to sand it smooth. And then if you want to bring back the high gloss, you'll have to do another coat of epoxy or redo the ultimate top coat. But I wouldn't use a planer. You'll, you'll just go right back to the MDF if that's what, in that case.
I don't think that helped it any, bro. I'm let that dry. I'm gonna mix up some epoxy real quick and show you what it looks like under some resin. Boom. Boom, and let me know quick some uh, Q&A if there's still any there. What's people got going on this weekend? I'm actually gonna be working all weekend on a brand new special stone coat project. I gotta make a bunch of content for it. We got a brand new product dropping, new and improved product dropping in April. One more month. So that's where you're that's where you're gonna want to make sure your handle has enough clearance. Your screws can um, reach when you add thickness. If you're not gonna demo your tile shower, you're gonna leave the tile installed. You're gonna want to try to use half inch foam if possible. Foam can be tricky to find. It's kind of uh, some regions, they don't even sell half inch. Some regions, you can't buy it at all. Some regions have a bunch of it. It's, it's used for concrete insulation, things like that. Uh, but I would use half inch over tile. I, I put um, one inch foam over cultured marble tub surround that I made. I have that video if someone, one of the mods could put that in the link in the description, well, in the super chat. Uh, I did a tub surround and I did not remove the existing cultured marble that was watertight, ready to go. I made my foam have a little drop edge. So when I installed it, bam, it covered the top of my uh, cultured marble panel. So you never even knew that was there still. It worked perfectly fine. All I had to do was get extended mechanical screws. So I took my screw that mounted my handle plate into the hardware store. It was an ace because they have a way better mechanical screw section than the Home Depot. Check shop local if you can. Anyways, I took that, my screw in there and I just bought an extended version of that by like an inch because I added an inch. Worked perfectly. I still had clearance for my handle, but if I were to add any more, I could tell my handle almost didn't want to start opening. It, it still opens and it still moves all the way, but any more, um, I would have to have bought the extender which extends that handle out further. So um, first thing, see what handle you have. If it's a Delta, odds are there's gonna be an extended piece you can add. It's like an aftermarket part. You could go right over your tile, keep your, if your tile's in good shape and just looks ugly, cover it. Just silicone these panels right to your tile. Then you're gonna silicone the vertical joints of that, uh, of the shower panels. You'll be good to go. Great question. All right. You have to sand the, uh, the initial surface there before you add the epoxy, the, the uh, alcohol ink? I very lightly did, but no, it's very, very lightly. And then we're going to cover it with that archival spray. And then the archival spray. So if I didn't do that right now, all these micas, which are the blue pearl, I mean the violet pearl, the green pearl, I could rub them and they're almost sitting on the surface. The alcohol was the medium to disperse them on there. And then when the alcohol dissipates, it's now back in a powder form. I'm sounding, I'm sounding like Bill Nye. This is way cool, but I'm not as smart as that dude. But that's, so I could, I could rub this blue, like watch right now, do it. See, did you catch that? See how it rubs off? Purple. So the archival spray, which is this stuff. Rust-Oleum's universal clear durable top coat. As UV resistance, but it also will keep all your colors chill in there. So when you go to do this epoxy layer, whoa, trip hazard, like I'm going to do right now, none of my blue colors, none of my mica colors, looks like a magnifying glass. Cool. the heat resistance for the ultimate top coat? Heat resistance is equal to the epoxy. So you could go 400, 
150 degrees. Um, we just did a quartz video. It was a, a full tutorial and Luke and I googled the downside of quartz countertops and the downside of quartz countertops is they can stain and they can burn. Quartz is actually made up of epoxy materials if you didn't know that. It's also blown up itty bitty actual minerals and, and stuff like that sifted through and then mixed with binders and, and resins to create slabs of quartz. Well, those quartz can stain. And I've, as a contractor, uh, I installed white quartz for this builder in Ashland. They always did white quartz. Pure white is the wind-driven snow, which is very difficult to install without staining it or marking it up. So we, uh, a plumber, I mean, excuse me, an electrician, a painter, a painter, walked across my peninsula to um, tape off the pendant lights because he was about to paint and he left his Nike shoe prints all across the courts that we could not get out. I tried everything under the sun to get it out but because polishing courts is extremely difficult. Well, the builders, this is a true story, sent me to a class to be trained on how to polish courts because it was going to cost him seven grand to change out the... Uh, the countertops and he was gonna have to build a where's my torch right here and he was gonna have to build the the painter so anyways I learned how to polish them out and it, it was a, a save the job but they will stain and they will also burn I've seen them burn I've seen them crack from heat so I took a I did a side-by-side -side test with the ultimate top coat counter coated countertop and then a quartz piece and I took a cast iron pan I got it blazing red hot, and then I put it on the countertop, put on some butter, fried an egg till completion, and then uh, removed the pan, and I burnt the quartz. It left a brown spot I could never get out. You could get out topical shoe prints, but you're not getting out of burn without really carving it down. I think I got epoxy on my watch. Why am I wearing this watch? Anyways, sorry, I got sidetracked. So. We put the uh, pan, we cook the egg right on the ultimate top coat, good to go. And that was like, uh, we cooked the egg for like a minute and a half or so till it was totally cooked, sizzling, smoking right on the countertop. 450 degrees, I wouldn't recommend cooking eggs on your countertop, but if your cookie sheet accidentally slides on over, you're gonna be totally fine. So I uh, heated up my art coat. It's winter here, it was snowing yesterday. So I take the art coat and I set it in front of a space heater probably about 15, 18 inches away, and about five minutes on the front, and then I rotate them to the back, warm them up for five minutes. That really helps with mixing. It helps with it flow, because as epoxy gets colder, it gets thicker and uh, less flow-y. So, to remove air, propane torch. You can also use a heat gun. Um, you're just gonna go side, keep it about an inch or so off the surface. But that piece came to life even more when I put the resin on. So this epoxy will be dry and cured, uh, ready for the next step in 24 hours. And then I would put the ultimate top coat on that if I'm gonna install it in the, in the, in the customer's home. Um, or keep it high gloss if this is going for like an artwork. No need for the ultimate top coat. But I'm gonna let this thing still dry. What, well, should I add more? I like what the green kinda did. It blew it out, but it catches that light. Wow, I don't know. What y'all think? Are there any more questions, Chris? We're gonna wrap this up. How about uh, shower foam substitutes if you can't find the foam? So that's a good question. And you're gonna wanna find something that in case it gets wet, doesn't ruin the whole shower. Like, that's why I'd be afraid to use MDF in a shower. If, if you were installing that, you hit the bottom corner and it, and it pops through the, the edge epoxy, because the edge, again, is vertical. It's gonna be the thinnest part of your epoxy. If any water hits that, it's gonna swell. It's gonna make that shower panel fail. The foam is, will not fail to water. I, I talked to 3M on the phone. I was asking them a bunch of questions about their product. They actually watched a shower video at my mom's cabin and they sat around the whole boardroom started watching it was way cool but anyways 
They said the only thing that degrades the foam, uh, it's completely water res resistant, it's UV. So if it's in a shower like that, you're good to go, especially if it's covered in epoxy, it's gonna be just fine. That's a good question. Also, uh, any suggestions for how to waterproof a wet room shower floor that, uh, that flexes one eight, that, that keeps cracking uh, the floor tile grout and keeps letting water under? Ooh. Is in the shower itself? If it's in the shower, it sounds like you need to you need to sh keep it from flexing as much. If you, if that if that that's the right way to fix it, is getting underneath that pan and and shuring it up somehow, if at all possible, because you don't want it flexing. Um, epoxy. We have a we have a okay. I'm letting the cat out of the bag. We're, we have a non-slip grip additive dropping in April. So it makes the glossy epoxy very slip resistant. So really, you, uh, if it's a ceramic tile, you gotta rough it up though, because ceramics does not want to absorb epoxy. But you could use the, the epoxy to seal it up. But again, you wanna keep, keep your floor from flexing is the proper way, uh, proper fix. Because otherwise, it's kind of just a Band-Aid going on it. Yes, you sure can. Uh, again, the handle would be your, your point of contention, but that's why RVs, the, these things like, you can't go find a cookie cutter shower replacement for an RV that's not a giant fortune. They're, like, they change, they're changing the RVs constantly. Um, so that's a pain point for them. Let's show them these panels. Look at these panels we made on the, uh, the live. This was uh, one of the shower panels we made, which was just, a exotic pour, right? No, no, this wasn't an exotic pour. I did a melted marble, but then I did an exotic pour vein. But that's just the, the pink foam right there. Um, awesome, awesome solution for a custom shower. Uh, if you don't know how to do tile, you can you can pay a plumber to water, you know, get your shower water tight, but that, that's pretty simple as well. It's a waterproofing membrane. You put the waterproof tape in the corners put another layer of waterproofing membrane right over that. All these shower questions are leading me to the conclusion that we need to do some showers very soon. Let me know in the comments below. Do you wanna see a full shower tutorial? This thing's looking cool from here, dude. Whoa, I just got distracted. Let me move that alcohol. I'm like a, I'm like 80, ADHD today, dude. I'm bouncing all over the place. I've had some great questions though, guys. Keep those up. That's why we bring in this bad boy into play. This is your your layer of protection because the alcohols are pretty good. They're not going to move like the uh, micas do. The micas are sitting right on the surface. So when I like when I'm ready to go, if I'm doing this in place, I would wait till this alcohol is all the way dry, and then I'm going to give it a coat of this clear protective spray. And it's just real quick. It's almost like putting on spray paint. You you can't tell where you went though, so just kind of. Take your time, cover the whole piece. And then when you go to put your clear epoxy on, like I just did right here, none of those colors will move. They're locked into place because of this clear protective spray, which bonds super well with the epoxy as well. So uh, I lightly sanded this as well. So I'll, you'll put down a coat of that, let it dry, and then very lightly sand with 220, just to hand sand to create a mechanical bond over the glossy spray paint. Then you're good to go. Great question though. Do they want to see a shower demo, Chris? Well, uh, and also uh, the set. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah the set. I could give them a preview of that. Have a set preview. That's a great call, Chris. I'm going to blow this done and then we'll show them the set. And then we're going to call it a, a wrap. So, if you got any last questions, ask them now or forever. Hold your peace till the next live, which we're going to be going live much more, guys, this year. We're bringing the lives back in 2023. Uh, Big Mitch is going back to the roots, to customer service. 
I'm still gonna make content, but I wanna start helping my customers out here on a, probably twice a month, I'll be going live, ans answering your questions, helping you with project questions, whatever you may have, I'm here to help in the DIY world. Yeah, so you can do good old fashioned green board sheetrock, which is sheetrock made for the moist environment. Uh, you could put that down and then you waterproof membrane from there. You're going to want to patch every area you, um, there's a waterproofing membrane from Ardex, also from Redguard. You could get the Redguard at your local hardware store, Ardex online, uh, or, or, or like a tile specialty shop. Schluter Dietra uh, also sells a waterproofing system. Um, but the DIYer, get your green board, get that up. You're going to uh, screw that on. And then you're gonna take the waterproofing membrane from Home Depot, it's called Red Guard. It rolls on like Pepto-Bismol pink and dries red. So I would give the whole entire shower a coat of Red Guard, let that dry. And then you're gonna go into the seams, the corners of your shower. Uh, and then I just use like a little weenie roller and I blab in uh, a nice heavy amount of Red Guard on the corners and they sell a seam tape. Ardex does, Schluter does. I don't know if Redguard does, they might in the tile section at the Home Depot. And then you're gonna put that corner tape around the corners of your shower and on the curb if you, if you built a tile uh, a curb. Uh, and then you're gonna kinda iron that down, squish out any excess Redguard, let it dry, and then coat the entire thing one more time. And I would also, they sell little patches to go over your screw holes. So you're really waterproofing that down. Now, at that point, you could hose off your, your, your sheetrock. It's gonna be completely watertight. And then you're gonna build your shower panels. Then you're gonna install that with silicone, clear silicone. Push that in, I'll put blobs. I'll put like two inch blobs every, you know, 12 to 18 inches. And I'll, I'll have them protrude off the wall. So when I push that shower panel in, it suction cups that bad boy nice and tight to your uh, waterproofed wall and you're good to go. Let that dry. And then where the shower panel meets the shower panel, I'll use 100% silicone. I'll pre-tape my seam and uh, really heavily fill that, tool it nice and pretty, peel my tape, shower's ready to go. Let that dry the next day, you could shower in it. Lots of requests for a shower demo. Cool, one is coming up. I was gonna build a shower set here, real quick. Turn around, Nate. Bam, check that out. I got a fake kitchen to start showing you guys stuff. So I'm gonna build an island here. I'm gonna start doing some countertop demos where this is so big, I'm gonna have to seam. So I'm gonna go back to the basics and show you how to seam countertops if you gotta build them off site and go install in a customer's home. That video is coming up. I'm gonna have a nice big island here where we're gonna have a waterfall edge. I'm gonna teach you how to make a waterfall edge. We've got some exciting new stuff coming this year at Stone Coat. So if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. We are doing tutorials every Saturday. We're doing full length tutorials. And if you haven't noticed, we'd start dropping shorts. Those are tons of fun. We do two of those a week. Those are during the middle of the week. Um, if you're an affiliate of ours, be sure to write, uh, tag us in your videos because that's how we know which videos to share. And we've been sharing those with your permission as shorts on our channel. So hopefully that's helping y'all out. And don't forget guys, we also have that sale going on till the end of the month. Coupon code FEB23. Uh, there's a link in the super chat. Uh, FEB2023, right? Cool, 2023, boom. Uh, uh, that will save you 20% on quick coat, epoxy dyes, flooring epoxy, various other products. Check it out guys, thanks. Let's answer a couple more Q and A's while we still have a little bit of time. Oh, it just hit five, that's one hour. We went half hour over what we talked about, but that's okay. Let's look at this piece one more time too. How about that black and orange panel? Yeah. Which video is that? So this guy, this is what we did for the, uh, the live, for the Van Life Summit. So that was a exclusive class. It was free for you guys to go see. Uh, we recorded it and we're gonna put it up on our own channel. 
I think that's on the schedule for next week. So this was a really easy piece to make though. Um, to make the foam, like I told you earlier, it, it's super simple. Uh, three ounces of quick coat, mesh, let that dry. Quick coat, let that dry. Two coats of undercoat. Once you have the two coats of quick coat on the mesh, that's now a piece of MDF. That's now a ready to go countertop, right? So then you're gonna do your two coats of undercoat, let that dry. And then I just did, uh, I did four ounces per square foot and I did a melded marble for this bad boy. Um, I used, I can't even remember, copper, blue earth, white dye, dark bronze, black, brown dye. And I just blobbed out random colors all over the piece, took my gloved fingers, melded them together. Then I used some isopropyl alcohol to mist those. And, and then I used the magic trowel, which has been my new favorite tool, to pull colors. What that does is that will pull, like I put this white here and I took the magic trowel and pulled it over. I pulled the white over, it, it looks really ugly at first. You're like, oh boy, I think I just screwed it up. But then when you mist it with the alcohol, boop, comes to life, my favorite part, uh, and it looks fantastic. And then I let that dry and then I could, this is ready for the um, quick coat, uh, excuse me, it's ready for the ultimate top coat. But the blue earth in there with this, I really love that. Blue earth is my favorite mica color. What is your favorite metallic color? Let, it, let me know in the comments below before I go. And I'm gonna pick somebody out of the comments as a winner and I'm gonna send you five free mica colors. Boom, ooh, that's nice, that's cool. And maybe even this little piece. Yeah, five colors and that little piece. Let me know your favorite mica color. And then we're gonna get out of here. It's Friday night. Any more Q&A, Chris? Yeah. I spilled my water, I'm so thirsty. So you talked about cold air temperatures. What about if it's hot and humid? Okay, a very, very good question. When it's hot and humid, and I learned this pretty much working in Texas, heat and humidity, holy cow. During the summer, it's it's a hell on earth there, <laughs> but I love Texas. <laughs> it's like humid as Hawaii, but you're not in the tropics. It's kind of the, hmm. but I love Texas. Uh, heat and humidity will speed up the cure time subtly. So when I take my edges and I take my edges only when doing an exotic pour or melded marble, and that's when I'm mixing up five to six ounces per square foot for my color coat and I wanna keep that epoxy on my project, so I build a tape dam. No need for a tape dam when you're doing just a regular old flood coat or three ounces per square foot chopped marble. Do not tape your edges. So it will speed that process up. Here in Oregon, I tape my edges. No matter all year round, I'm peeling them between two and a half to three hours after I mixed. In Texas, in the hot, humid summer months that I love so much, I'm peeling tape an hour and a half to two hours. So uh, an hour earlier, it's, it's thickening up, enabling that to stay thick and give you really beautiful edges. So the higher the heat, the faster it's gonna uh, cure. The higher the humidity, it's also fast, it's gonna cure. So I keep the temperature in the shop about 72 degrees pretty much year round. Uh, in the summer, I lower that a little bit, but when I'm doing a customer's piece, I walk it up, I keep it above 70 always when I'm curing, for, especially for the first three days. Um, and especially when it's going in a customer's home. When I'm just showing you guys stuff, it's like 68 in this bad boy in the summer. Great question though. And then uh, for the cold, to, to recap that. Cold, and to recap the cold, when epoxy is cold and it cures, so okay, number one, when epoxy is cold, it's thicker, it's harder to mix, it's gonna entrain uh, more air as you mix and your epoxy batch may turn white. What that is is ex excessive air going in there. It's still usable, but you're gonna have to take your time torching that, removing the air. Um, torch it four or five times for rather than three. Uh, that way it stays nice and clear like this bad boy. So what I do in the winter months when it's cold is I warm it up in front of a space heater, bring the temperature up in the epoxy. It mixes easier, it moves easier, it self levels easier. And then you want to let it cure above 70 degrees. All right, optimal above 70. Do not let it go below 65 degrees for the first three days. That will slow the curing process, 
which could lead to a softer cure overall. So if you set a heavy item, it could leave a, a ring, an indention. Don't worry, it will come back. This epoxy has a memory, which is something Mike worked with a chemist when he was initially developing this, Mike, my brother. Um, so if you see that ring, don't panic. You can warm it up with a blow dryer to bring it back or just over time, it will come right on back. But oftentimes when you have heavy items leaving indentions in the resin, it may have cured at a colder temperature. So uh, the colder the temperature, uh, the slower it's going to cure, the thicker the material will be, and really below 65 can hurt the overall durability of the product. Great question. What hey, else we got? Just made. Can that be used as a backsplash? Say what now? Uh, the piece is just made. Yeah, totally. I can't do anything with it till all this alcohol dries, and then I'm going to spray it with the archival spray, and then I could epoxy it again, and then I could put it wherever I wanted. Could use it as a coffee table, a baby island. Um, I probably, I kind of like how this works with a little bit of my undertones. I would, I would, I'm going to continue to work at it more. I'm going to add more and more. Not right now though, because it is quite late on a Friday night. But that's the cool part about this. You could walk away and come back to this and add more colors. I might even add, like you said, a gold. Let's, what could I make a gold? No. It's a pain in the butt to do the powders because you got to get a baby stick. So that being said, that's a pro tip. If you're going to buy this, these little mixing bottles, try to get one that has a bigger orifice than that because it was quite difficult to get the mica powders in. I just took one of my popsicle sticks and broke it up really tiny. I mean, it worked, but it was uh, not ideal. All right, a couple more questions or one more and we're out of here. Nate's tired, man. He's holding that camera for an hour. Now you're regretting not using the, the monopod, aren't you? I bet. What about the mirror behind you? Yeah? They want to see that video? Uh, what? Uh, the, the set, the mirror behind you, the backdrop. Yeah? That's his phone, right? Yeah, that's exactly, that's the, okay. <laughs> that's awesome. Nathan and I were uh, killing time at the end of the day. And he's like, I wonder if there's a Guinness record on the world's largest epoxy wall. We may have this. This is uh, a bunch of foam panels taped together. We did this as one giant wall. And then three of us picked it up from way over there and walked it and installed it. So. That's way epic. I don't think we could have transported it very easily to the job site. <laughs> so if you have a big flat area on your job, you could totally make this. And we, crazy as it sounds, but we use masking tape to seam this stuff together. We'll put the panels right together. We'll put two inch tape right across that front and back. And then the epoxy absorbs right through that tape. It's almost like a piece of rebar. It becomes one with the foam. It does not come off. Kenny and I, uh, Rhonda's husband in Texas, we used half inch foam. I'm doing cartwheels all over it. We're picking it up and making, like trying to break it apart. This was half inch. I can't, number one, I can't believe the foam didn't snap in half, but it, it held, the seams held. Uh, so you tape it front and back with masking tape, laid it down, and then we covered it with the mesh and went to town and then installed it. And this has the ultimate top coat on it and it's super, Durable, way durable, way durable. Uh, what work is a countertop? I don't know about that. Maybe, I have not tried it, but maybe in an RV. I worry about, as hard as this is though, I don't, what I worry about is a drop fall. Boom, if you drop something super heavy on it and that foam compresses it all in any way, that could, that could create an issue, especially if it was let's say like a uh, cast iron pot that has legs on it. I don't know why you would drop that on your countertop, but if you did, boom, that, that's what I would worry about. Whereas the MDF board, it's solid. It, it, will, it will not, it'll absorb that, that impact without compressing any. If the foam compresses behind the epoxy, you're gonna be in trouble, but maybe try it out. I don't know if I would do it. I think we're gonna call it, boys. Nate is tired, I'm tired. Thanks for being here, everybody. I'm gonna be doing this twice a month, so subscribe if you haven't. 
Let your friends know all about us. And don't forget, we have that coupon code FEB2023. Save 20% off epoxy dyes, quick coat, floor and epoxy, various other items. There's a link in the super chat, takes you to a landing page where all the products on sale are displayed at your convenience. Thanks for being here, everybody. I had a great time. Uh, follow us on social media. I'm gonna cover this with some epoxy, show you what it looks like all complete. And until next time from Stone Code Epoxy, wait, Mike would be so mad if I said that. I one time had to re-ride, so I'll re-ride that. Thanks for being here, everybody, from Stone Coat Countertops. Don't forget, you got this, and we'll see you at the next live video. Let's do this. Have a great weekend, everybody. I'm out of here.